We'll start with Michael Lev, Arizona Daily Star. Hey there, Josh. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, so it's no secret that the offensive line hasn't performed up to, I'm sure, what your expectations are so far this season. When you look at the film, do sort of a self-evaluation of yourself and the group, what, what are you seeing? I mean, yeah, uh, last two weeks evaluating, um, I got to play better. Um, as a group, we're not always all on the same page, and that starts with me. So um, uh, no matter who's who's out on that field, we're, we're going to step it up, and I think we have the right mindset right now. We're going to come to work this week, and we're going to improve, and that's that's our goal um, as a unit right now. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to accomplish. You mentioned uh, sort of being the, the leader of that group, the one who kind of, um, you know, directs traffic as it were, how much personal responsibility do you take when the unit struggles as a whole? Oh, I put a lot of that on myself. Um, that's, that's whether I gotta, I gotta come in, watch more film. Um, I gotta work harder. I gotta, um, make sure everybody during practices, we're getting all the reps that we need, the reps that we're going to see. Um, and I put a lot of that on myself, so I gotta be better. Sure. And as the leader of the group, what's your message or messaging for the rest of the guys? Um, I, right now it's, it's keep grinding. Don't, don't give up. Um, uh, adversity has struck and that's, that's within our room and we gotta, we gotta work harder than we ever have to come out of that, um, with some success. Make sure that shows. Next question, Justin Spears, Arizona Daily Star. Um, so Will came into the game on, on the second play. Um, what did you see out of his performance and, and how different was it having somebody other than Grant be the quarterback? I think, I think Will performed well. Um, he's, he's a true freshman quarterback playing in his first game. He kind of got thrown into the fire. Um, uh, as an O-line, we didn't really help him out a whole lot. He's running for his life. He took some shots and that's on us and we gotta be better. Next question, Rich Herrera, Wildcats Radio 1290. Good afternoon, Josh. Can uh, can you talk to us about what team morale is like right now as you get ready for the Colorado game? Um, Sunday was was uh, tough for as an O line group. I can't really speak for different position group, but as O line, we were we we're down. We had another bad game. Um, here's the thing: you have you have an opportunity on Monday to go out and get better at practice. You have an opportunity today to go out and get better at practice. I think that's we got guys in the room that want to come out and get better and continue to get better and show that, that they're working hard and um, to be able to make this offense work and move the football for, for Arizona. So um, I think that the morale, um, even though, even though we've had two rough games in a row, um, we're, our energy is not down and we're still coming to attack each day. Um, and if you could, can you preview Colorado? And uh, the challenges that that defense will throw at your offense. Yeah, Colorado's a good football team. They're three and zero. They got a, uh, a first year head coach. Um, their defense. They're doing a couple different things from last year. A lot more four down. Um, we just got to show up to work and fix our errors. We're um, we didn't get beat by UCLA. We beat ourselves, and that's on our execution um, as an O line unit. So we got to come come in each day and fix that. Um, I think that'll prove us some success. Thank you so much. Next question, we'll go back to Michael Lev. Josh, how's your health? Good. How's yours? <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I'm way older than you, so yeah. a lot more bumps and bruises. But your knee, what, would, are you 100%, uh, 90, 80? Yeah, I'm, my knee is fine. Um, there's a couple times where it's – gets a little banged up, but other than that, it's no lasting issues throughout the entire game. It'll hurt for a couple minutes or whatever it is. But other than that, I'm fine. Like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have rushed back to uh, USC if I wasn't able to play, if I was hurting the team in any way um, health wise. So I think, I think uh, that's, that's where I'm at health wise. I'm fine. Sure. Do, do you think you would have been able to play against Utah if that game had happened? Uh, no, I would not have played in that game. You would not. Okay. Okay. Have you ever considered like a lot of guys who have minor injuries um, or even somewhat significant injuries, they're just opting out of this season. It's a shortened season. You know, it's, it's weird, all that stuff. Did you ever consider just 
you know, why, why risk it? No, that is, uh, that's not really who I am. I mean, being able to play on Saturdays and play and get to practice every day. Um, that's, that's like one of my favorite things. And that time that I was out during almost the entire camp, um, it was tough. Uh, not, just not being able to play, um, getting to watch all my teammates out there. And uh, that's something that just eats me alive. So I, that's something uh, I just can't see myself doing is opting out. And yeah. Sure. And you mentioned against UCLA that it was more a case of you guys beating yourselves. It seemed like, uh, unlike Washington, it was more communication type issues with a variety of blitzes that the Bruins threw at you. Is that an accurate assessment of, of what happened for the most part? Yeah, definitely. It's, and that's on me. Um, they brought they brought some different stuff, same stuff out of different formations and stuff that we haven't seen before. Um, but as uh, we got to execute um, and we can't just continue to make the same errors over and over again. Um, so as a unit, that's what we got to we got to improve on is our execution. Thank you. Next question, Alec White, Arizona Daily Star. Hey, Josh, the, the run game this season hasn't been as strong as it has in years past. Why, why do you think that is? Uh, O-line execution. Um, and that's, that's, that's really what it is. We're, we're having a lot of mental errors, um, stuff, stuff that shouldn't be happening more than once. And then if it does, um, it's really hindering our ability. Um, so, yeah. How do, you, how do you go about correcting that? work hard every day at practice. We got to, we got to come in, eliminate all that stuff, spend time in the film room, get in the playbook, all that, all the stuff that um, is going to increase the confidence of, as a unit to be able to play better and to be able to run the ball. Um, I think it will really help us out. Thank you. Next question, David Kelly, KVOA. Hey Josh, just uh, getting back to Wolf Plummer, just how would you describe his demeanor throughout the game from the moment he came in on that first play, not knowing he was going to play kind of all the way through until the end of the game? I mean, he came in with confidence. He, he knows he can play. Um, he, he's proven he can play um, at this level. Um, as a true freshman, he came in, he had confidence. Um, he, was, he was communicating to us. Um, I think that that's really, he was, he was leading our offense. Um, and that's really all, all you can ask for being thrown in a situation like that as in, from an O-line perspective. So uh, we appreciate that. And it looks like you've kind of got the Aaron Blackwell uh, red beard thing happening there. Are you, are you, are you trying to compete with him for, for the best looking red beard on the team? No, I think he's got me beat, but uh, I don't know. I just started growing it out and I haven't, I haven't really found the time to shave it off. So is he, is he giving you any pointers on that? Uh, no, I'll, I'll just, I'll take my hints on the side. Watch from a distance. Next question, Jay Gonzalez, Fox Sports 1450. Josh, when uh, when Will came into the game on on Saturday, is there any you know different approach, different mindset, knowing that you got a guy back there who hasn't played it down of, of college football? Do you guys look at it any differently than when you've got Grant back there, who's you know although still somewhat inexperienced, at least he's been in there, you know, played some. I mean, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see it different, but as an old lineman, um, no matter who's back there, you gotta accomplish your job and do your your one eleventh of the offense. And I think that's what we're we struggled with is not doing our part um, to help them out, whoever's back there. Um, and we we just gotta continue to work and get better at doing our own job and not focus on what other people are doing behind us. Next question will go back to Michael Love. So we've heard good things about another Josh, Josh Baker, um, the freshman, someone who conceivably could play alongside of you or eventually succeed you at center. What's your kind of scouting report on him? He's, he's, a, he's a talented young uh, freshman. Um, uh, yesterday was his birthday, actually, so happy late bur birthday to him. Um, but, yeah, he can play. Um, he's proven that. He gives phenomenal effort at practice. He puts in the time in the film room. Uh, he, he was able to pick up the, the playbook very quick for a freshman. Um, given they had a little extended time from summer to not playing to all the way through fall camp, uh, a little more time than a freshman normally does, but he picked it up real quick. Um, he's proven he can play and he wants to play. And um, yeah, I'm excited for him. 
Yeah, you mentioned um, the run the run game a little bit. It seemed like you guys found a nice rhythm there in the third quarter, maybe into the fourth quarter. You were playing with a lot of tempo and running the ball a lot. Did you did you feel like that was maybe the best um, sequence for the yeah. offensive line since the USC game? Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think tempo helped us out a lot. Um, one thing, one thing that it stopped UCLA from doing is they weren't able to get get set. So we were just we were going and going and going. Um, I think that helped us out a lot. And I think that's something that we're trying to do, and we got to continue as an O line to be be up on the ball, ready to go, um, and lead, leading the way in that run game. Yeah, I know you said that you can't speak for the rest of the team, only the OL uh, room. But what is your sense of the level of urgency, desperation, team-wide to end this losing streak? Uh, I think it's very strong. I think we got guys in this building that that want to win, and they've proven that they want to win, and they want to compete. Um, guy, guys that that will come to work every single day to end that streak, and that's that that Sunday feeling that we've had the last three weeks because we we haven't won yet, um, but especially the last two weeks of of very poor performances is, is uh, eating at some guys and we got guys that want to get better. And that's, that's something that's really cool to me to see. Um, we got new guys coming in the building and they have that same mindset already. Um, so I, I like seeing that, but we just got to continue to get better. So we don't have to uh, uh, keep feeling that same feeling. Thank you. Final questions for Josh will be Justin Spears. Uh, Josh, have you ever experienced a losing streak um, like you guys are on? Like in high school, did you ever go on a 10-game losing streak? Uh, I did not, no. Um, I'm not saying my, my high school days were full of winning, but um, it's something I haven't experienced. And I've been talking with the coaches, and it's like we gotta, you got to figure out a way to pull yourself out of this and come to work every single day. And that's, that's kind of the hardest thing is – uh, you see that some guys have have in fact opted out, um, and it's 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 that type of thing. It's you don't want, you don't want to come to work, but like those guys are getting out of the building, um, and the guys that want to win are staying here. And I think that's that's really good for us. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what's it like in in, in practice um, so far with with the quarterbacks that you guys are working with? Uh, what do you mean? Just in terms of, of, of reps, is, is Will getting a lot more reps with the ones? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't want to talk on their their quarterback room, but, yeah, they're, they're all sharing reps. Um, and like I said, it's not – whoever's back there, they all have the ability to lead us down the field. Um, but that starts with us as an O-line, and we got to continue to get better. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, guys. Next up will be Isaiah Johnson. Right, questions for Isaiah, please raise your hand. I'll start with Michael Lev. Hey there, Isaiah. Hello. Hey. Um, so uh, you did not play, I don't think, your first two seasons here, and you're getting to play a lot now. What's the experience been like? Um, obviously not playing. It was a bummer, but it's been – it's a process, and I, I wouldn't change it at all. I, w I wouldn't go back and change anything. I think it's what made me who I am today, and it's been fun. You know, I can actually say, like, I savor the moment even more. Sure. What do you think you got out of those first two years? Just experience of just being become more, more mature. I was 17 when I came in, so yeah. Sure, and um, was it it had to be frustrating at times though to not to not be playing? Well, can you repeat that? I said it had to be frustrating at times to not be playing. Is that is that accurate? Oh yes, you could. Yeah. So how did you kind of deal with that? Well, I believe everything happens for a reason. You know, coaches. I just wasn't ready, so I can't really get mad at it. It was just all me. Sure. And when you finally got out there um, in these first three games, did it take a little bit of time to get reacclimated to game speed? Uh, no, we practiced fast. So I, I found it actually it was a lot slower. Huh, okay. Thanks. Next question, Rich Herrera. 
Isaiah, good afternoon. Um, a lot's been written and said about the linebacking core. Can you talk about the strengths of your position group? Um, I think one of our strengths is, I mean, we're just, we, we all want to work. We come to work every single day, every single day and want to get better. We help each other get better, whether that's me making Jalen Harris better or him making myself better, along with the work Freeberg and Wabana Watson. So, yeah. Second half against UCLA, uh, quite a few three and outs. Uh, Coach, someone talked yesterday about the, the adjustments that were made at halftime. I think Anthony Pandy talked about it after the ball game that you guys at halftime sat down and said, hey, we got to do a better job of tackling. In your opinion, what was the difference uh, for the difference uh, for the defense in that second half against UCLA where you guys were able to get three and outs? I think just wanted it more. I mean, most of our most of the team, most of our uh, most of the players are from California now. So just wanted it more. We know, um, we know real quick, can we get a preview? What have you seen of Colorado on tape? Uh, what what challenges are they going to present present to your defense? I mean, they have a big quarterback. I mean, the, the their eleven personnel passing is going to be, yeah. I feel like, yeah. Okay, one last question, if you don't mind. Um, your feelings, thoughts. We're not going to be able to have parents in the stands uh, for the foreseeable future. At football games, has, has that been a topic of discussion amongst the team? And, and um, share your feelings, if you don't mind, about not being able to play in front of friends and family. I mean, obviously, it's a bummer, but it's fine. We came here to play football, you know, whether it's empty or it's packed. So I feel like that's everyone. That's how everyone feels. Great. Thank you. Next question, David Kelly. Hey Isaiah, just uh, you made you were able to make that that play in the red zone, uh, get your first tackle for loss on the ledger there. But what goes through your mind when you when you're finally able to make a play like that? And, and do you feel like you've arrived at that point when you can get in there and and get a stop like that? Yeah, it's funny that you say that because when I made the play, like I wasn't in there, like it wasn't me who was right there. It's hard to explain, but it it was good, like. It didn't hit me until like I got on the plane, I guess, or I when I watched film again. Oh yeah, I did make that play. So, yeah. What? Uh, so I mean, what do you think? I mean, was it, it kind of felt like an out of body experience? I guess is what you're kind of describing there. Yeah, it definitely was. Like it just didn't. I guess it was like surreal, surreal. What did you see on that play? Because it looked like you went, you were, you just weren't on blocked. And and when you're in that situation where I guess you're just kind of standing there in the open, do you? Do you, is it kind of a slow to react, like, whoa, like you're expecting to be blocked, but you're not, and now there's a chance to make the play? Uh, I just played my keys. The uh, the, the O-lineman, he went down, and I just read. I just played my keys, and it was open. I just went for it. Outstanding. Thanks, brother. Next question, Michael Lev. Uh, you primarily played inside linebacker in high school. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and then you moved – to a defensive end here for a while, and now you're in that that outside linebacker position. What's been the biggest challenge, you know, just kind of moving around from one spot to another? I guess the physicality of it. Uh, obviously, playing inside linebacker, you don't see too many, like, as much linemen, like, from playing DN, where you're going against a 300-pound offensive tackle every single play. So, yeah. So how, how have you tried to adapt to that? I mean, I feel like it's like the same thing. Like I'm used, like like you said, I play inside linebacker, so I'm used to dropping. And outside linebacker, it's the same thing as DN. I got this is like a mixture of both. Sure. Happy. And when and when you rush you're rushing the passer, are there specific traits or um, points of emphasis that Coach Boo tries to teach all you guys to help you get that pass rush going? Oh yes, target point. Yes, we we, we have yes we have a lot of keys and target point and takeoff is a big one. What what is target point? Just target you. So you have a point between that. That's your race. That's your race on the O lineman is three yards behind him. So you have to beat him there. I'll beat him there. Okay. Um, I, I assume that guys are uh, not satisfied with the sack output so far. What can you do to generate some more sacks, which probably will you know maybe create some turnovers that you guys could use also. We just got to get to the quarterback. Use more pass rush moves and and just get better with our keys. Sure. Um, your hometown is listed as Victorville and your high school is Los Alamitos. And I know those two aren't really near each other. So what's kind of the, what's the story there? So I'm originally from Victorville, California. Then my freshman year, I moved to Seal Beach, California and went to Los Alamitos. 
Huh. Okay. Is that because your family moved or is that because you wanted to go to a better football program? My family moved. Your family moved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. You were among the first uh, players to commit uh, to Arizona, I think, in the 2018 class. What appealed to you about this opportunity? Just how real um, Coach Shates was and Coach Boone. They came and saw me a lot. They see me multiple times a week. So that was very big for me. Huh. And obviously those guys aren't here anymore. Is it mm -hmm. difficult to, to – you know, undergo a, like a coaching transition like that, especially when the guys who recruited you are, are no longer with the program? Um, I wouldn't say it wasn't that difficult because Coach Ace was here for a while and just, it was like a smooth transition. Thanks. Next question, Alec White. Hey, Isaiah, you had a couple defensive backs uh, announced that they were opting out of the season and there's been other players on this on the defensive side that have opted out this year as well. What does it do to a, the mindset of the defense? I know it's a different position group, but just the mentality of a defense when you have players uh, that decide that they don't want to, they don't want to play. Uh, we don't really think about it. You know, we just focus on what we got that upcoming week. And this week we got Colorado. Next question, Rich Herrera. Can you talk about some of the work that you guys are putting in right now to uh, to shore up the edge. Uh, one of the things that Coach Semlin talked about during the UCLA game is you guys were able to set an edge and and uh, keep people from turning up field. Yeah, so yeah, that's definitely what we're doing. We're doing that along with tackling. As you saw in the game, there was a lot of missed tackles. So, yeah. Thank you. Final questions for Isaiah will be Michael Lev. Yeah, um, it was asked earlier uh, about, you know, the second half against UCLA and how much you guys improved. Is there something you can take from that second half against UCLA and apply it to the Colorado game? Yeah, just how we finish is how we have to start and play all four quarters. So, yeah. And is I, I take it, you know, in, going against UCLA, the kind of the main objective was to shut down their run game. Is it the same against Colorado? I think they're one of the top rushing teams um, in the league. Yeah, I would say it's the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Isaiah. Oh, good. All right. Next up will be Lorenzo Burns. All right, questions for Lorenzo, please raise your hand. We'll start with David Kelly. Hey, Lorenzo, what's it just like to kind of be one of the old men out there on this defense of, of a lot of young guys? It's a new experience. Uh, it's funny because I used to sit back and think my freshman year that, you know, I'll probably be out by now, but being the oldest on the team, having a lot of kids that were like born in 2002 calling me old man and everything, you know, it, it's, it's kind of funny, but I'm getting used to it, taking on the road. You, you and Christian are kind of so different in, in terms of your stature out there, but, but how would you say you guys are similar in, in your ability to play the cornerback position? I think he has his own style of play and I have my own style of play. He goes out there and does his thing. He's tall, big physical I'm you know smaller stature like you said but you know I take advantage of that by just being trying to be physical and you know be quick so in our own ways we have a different style to the game how would you describe his intelligence it appears at times that, that he's one of the guys out there that's making sure that his side of the field is kind of positioned correctly for a lot of plays right I, I think as a whole in the secondary everybody is pretty intelligent you know everybody does their responsibility football is not an easy game to play, especially on Saturdays when things are flying around like that. But um, like I said, in the secondary, everything, everybody's pretty intelligent, so. When you break down yourself in the run game, it looked like, you know, there, there was that 35 yard run where, where Dimitri kind of busted out. It looked like maybe you had a chance to, to get him down early. When, when you look at that play and evaluate yourself, how can you be better in those situations? It goes with anything for any game um, when you're watching film. You know, it's just little things you can improve on, you know, so that that was a play I should have made. I went back, talked to my coaches, um, working on that in practice and when the opportunity pops up again, I will take advantage of it. 
Next question, Justin Spears. Um, so, Lorenzo, uh, when we talked to you before the season, uh, you said, you know, you wanted to come back to improve NFL draft stock. Um, but even, you know, there, there was a point where it was uncertain if the Pac-12 was going to play football or not. And now here we are at this point. What decide to stay at Arizona through everything? Right. I, I think just coming back and being with my teammates again, I know we've already had to talk about me. Uh, making a decision as far as whether I needed to declare or transfer was never an option for me to leave the school. But I think at the end of the day, coming back and playing with the guys that I played with last year, uh, Christian Rogan McKenzie and everybody else, you know, I just wanted to take advantage of the opportunity and hopefully come successful at the end of the season. So that, that was my main reason why I wanted to come back. And how would you um, summarize or assess your Arizona journey up until this point? It's been a roller coaster, to be honest with you. I've enjoyed every minute of it. You know, I have, I don't have anything negative to say about my experience here. I met a lot of great people, a lot of great connections, and um, I'm excited for my next step in life. Next question, Rich Herrera. Good afternoon. Um, you talked about the adjustments that you made at halftime uh, against UCLA and how you could build on those for the rest of the season. Right. I, we just we just made minor tweaks, you know, certain calls were changed, um, certain conversations were had between uh, the position groups. I think at the end of the day, the football, when you're down like that, it's all about just playing hard and, and doing your responsibility when you're down like that. And just continuing to do so for the rest of the game. So having that mindset for the rest of the season, for the three or so games that we have left, I think we're going to benefit from that. Being the, the one of the senior statesmen, I don't want to call you the old man, but being one of the senior statesmen in the defensive backfield, uh, with guys getting injured, guys opting out, there's a lot of opportunities for, for, for younger players to step up and be that next man up. Can you talk about what you've seen in some of these guys that have been uh, asked to, to fill in and, and step into roles? All right, I, I've been none but proud for the guys that, that have stepped up. They've done a great job. This whole season has been chaotic. It's been chaos, you know, COVID from not playing to playing to people testing positive all across the nation and having to sit out. So it's requiring a lot of uh, young guys across the nation, no matter what school it is, to step up and play. Specifically, our, our team, they've done a great job, and they will continue to do so for the three or so games we have left. Can you give me a preview of Colorado? They're a big running team, big running quarterback, and the challenges they're going to pose for your defense this week? I just – I. I mean, with, with any game every week, you just, it comes down to execution. Every team is going to uh, propose a certain challenge each week. Uh, of course, they're going to run the ball. Every team has ran the ball on us. We, we just have to stop the run, do our job, and we should come out with a victory. One last thing, if you don't mind. Um, now that we're not going to be able to have family in the stands anymore, has that been a topic of discussion? And, and what's, the, what's been the feedback from the team of not being able to play in front of friends and family? It hasn't really been a huge topic. I mean, there's been conversation here and there, but everywhere we played, there hasn't been any fans. So we're used to it by now, you know, and it wasn't enough fans to make a great impact. So just not having fans here, it's, it's not really a big change. Thank you so much. Next question, Michael Love. Hey there, Lorenzo. Um, how many snaps did you play against UCLA? I'm not sure. I, I know it was a lot. <laughs> maybe can't count that high which I, I know you played all all the defensive snaps which special teams units are you on I'm on punts and I'm back up on kickoff coverage back up on kickoff okay so that one sequence when um, Tyler had to punt like three times in a row because of penalties did you run down there three times in a row uh, I think I ran I think one of them got called short I think and I came off the field I think it was two times in a row and then I came off the field and then we punted again I think Stanley Bearhill winning. Okay. So regardless of all that, um, I'm sure you're tired, you know, when you have to play that many snaps. So how do you fight through that? I just, on, on an individual note, I just, in my mind, I just have to be resilient. It's football is a hard game. It's going to test you whether you're playing a lot of snaps or not. It's physical. So during practice, I'm running. I'm, I'm talking to myself, making sure I'm staying in the game, catching my breath, taking advantage of those TV timeouts. And on the team standpoint, I'm having other people talk to me and help me get rested and get my mind right for the upcoming series. Sure. Is it more of a physical challenge or a mental challenge? 
I would say a little bit of both. You know, physically you, you will get tired, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all about how strong you are mentally. And if you can't push on mentally, then you're going to have a tough time. But I, I feel like I've done a good job of doing that. Sure. Your sure. So several defensive backs um, have opted out for a variety of reasons. They all have their, their individual decisions to make. I'm not going to ask you to comment on any specific guys, but what do you make of that situation kind of overall? I respect my teammates. At the end of the day, I respect the decision. This, like I said, this season is chaotic. It's a lot of chaos. I mean, that's all. Real, that's all I can really say to it. So, thank you. Next question, David Kelly. Lorenzo, this might be a bit specific. I know in the past you played against, you know, Lavisca, you know, for Colorado. I was curious how much tape you've watched of his younger brother who's playing now, and and maybe how they're different or or similar? Well, actually, on an interesting note, I haven't played against him. He, he was hurt every time we played him. And cool. Okay. KD, KD was also hurt when we played him. So, um, but just, I've been, <clears throat> I've been watching film since, I believe, the game, after the game on Saturday, so Sunday. So I've just been watching everybody, not really him specifically, but just everybody as a whole. And I know I see in the springtime, I see you at a lot of the softball games. I know you have a friend on the team. Just curious, like, what you've learned about that sport, what you like about it, watching it when you're there, and maybe kind of what you take away from, from those competitors, those female competitors that maybe helps you drive yourself when you're on the football field. I, you know, it's like a friendly competition between me and my partner on the team. You know, I, I talk to her, and it, they're pretty good if, if nobody knows. And I think they were ranked at, like, fourth, fifth in the nation at one point in time. So, and they made it to the World Series two years ago. It's interesting to see them go on the field and compete at a high level like that. Sometimes we go to the park and play catch and compete with each other. So it, it's always fun. She, did she teach you anything about throwing it all? Yeah, just, just a little bit. She'll, she'll correct me on my, on my throwing all a little bit on my technique. Thanks, Brent. All right, final question for Lorenzo. We'll go back to Michael Lev. So, uh, Christian Roland Wallace has almost had a couple interceptions. Um, Jackson Turner almost forced a fumble that easily could have been called um, the other way. How much are you guys talking about turnovers, generating turnovers, you know, making something happen in, in that way? We talk about it every practice. It's, it's an emphasis every practice and every game. Turnovers help you win the game. Of course, we've had a lot of opportunities to get turnovers. Things just haven't gone our way. I think it's coming soon. I think turnovers are about to be created a lot throughout the next couple of games because it's, it's, we've, been, we've been so close to having them. So, but I think our guys have been doing a good job in practice trying to take advantage of overemphasizing and getting the ball out. With Christian, I mean, he, the ball goes off his fingertips against USC, probably ends the game if he catches the ball, changes the kind of the narrative around the team, but it doesn't seem like he's let that bother him. Have you noticed that as well? It did, didn't seem like it's lingered for him at all. See, C Rose done a great job of, of just ignoring the white noise outside of football. You know, I and I had a conversation with him maybe I think when he first got here about my freshman year, my first year playing here, actually getting on the field and how you, <clears throat> how you just have to ignore the white noise and everything else because everybody's gonna have a comment to say about what you're doing, how you're doing. You're not gonna please everybody. It's just all about pleasing yourself. And if you thought you did a good job, what you, can, what you can improve at. So I just had that conversation with him. I think he's done a great job of just staying focused. Sure. And the last thing for you, um, what, what's the level of urgency and desperation in the locker room to end this losing streak? I wouldn't say it's um, desperation, but I would say that we do have a mindset of we, it's every week, we're going to try to go one and oh. We want to win these games. We're not trying to go out there and lose these games. We're fighting. We're battling. Things just haven't gone our way. Execution has to be a key. Uh, we still have a positive mindset that we can go out here and win these next games coming up. We thought we should have won the last few that we played. So it, it's been positive. We, we've been working hard, and we will continue to do so. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. That's all we have for today.